welcome to tonight's Citywide Sports Network College Basketball Telecast on KCWX-TV. We're live in San Marcos with the Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe and the Texas State Bobcats from Strahan Coliseum. This is Mike Lefko with Chuck Megatenic bringing you this Sunbelt Conference action. And welcome to the Gun Automotive Group pregame show. It's presented by Gun Automotive Group, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. Gun Auto. Com. We're going to get started a little bit closer to the top of the hour, and Chuck, that's because the Texas State women just pulled off a win over Louisiana Monroe, and their coach picked up her 100th career win. Yeah, they moved the ball, they shot the ball, and the ladies have been doing a really nice job here at Texas State winning ball games this year, much like the fellas have this year as well. So double dip action, the Warhawks and the Bobcats, and let's break down this matchup. Texas State comes in hot on a five-game win streak, and they rarely, if ever, lose at home. They've only lost once at home this year. Well, I think the biggest thing you could say about this team is they've really picked it up once Sunbelt Conference play started. And talk about a team that's been clutch in close games. They've won all five of those games by a margin of 17 total points. So they've been able to keep games close. They've won games where people didn't necessarily think they were going to win them. And hence, they find themselves very early on one of the Sunbelt Conference leaders. For the Warhawks on the other side of it, it's a team that still is kind of close, but they really haven't found the pieces yet, almost still trying to find their identity. Yeah, they've lost a couple of row in conference play. And you know, this is a team that for whatever reason, you know, they shoot the ball lights out from three point line but they have a hard time scoring inside the hoop. So, you know, it's one of those things right now, they're still trying to find exactly who they are. Sometimes for teams that happens late in the year, right now for ULM, that's exactly the case. Well, let's take a look at the key contributors in this one for Texas State and for Louisiana Monroe. So for Louisiana Monroe, they have a guy who almost scored half of their points last week in their game, Sam McDaniel. Yeah, you know, he's one of three guys on their team that averages double figures and He's averaging right around, as you see, 16, 17 points a game. But this guy is fifth in the Sun Belt Conference in field goal percentage. So obviously, this is going to be one of those guys that Texas State is going to have to keep a close eye on tonight. He's also one of those guys. You send him to the line late in the free throw game, uh, late to the line in a free throw game, this guy's going to burn you. He's making free throws at an 88% clip. Really good player. This whole team, as a matter of fact, loves to shoot the ball from the free throw line. And for Texas State, only a sophomore, but really the heart and soul of this team, Nigel Pearson, their leading scorer. Yeah, averaging 14 per, and I think the thing you could say most about Nigel is the fact that he does it and he's consistent. He scored in 12 straight double-figure digit games. That's not easy to do at any level of college basketball, but I think as you watch this game unfold tonight, you'll realize that for Texas State, it's seemingly a different guy every night. You know, this is a team that likes to share the ball. They build their team first with defense. You know, any Danny Casper team, as we've noticed over the years, he's going to start with defense. But they really, really lock down teams almost like no other. I mean, they're ranked 17th in the country at locking teams down. So we're in for a defensive showing tonight, at least from Texas State. Well, Texas State has an opportunity to really make some ground in the conference. They come in with just one conference loss. They were picked to finish sixth in the league. But right here, just a game back of Louisiana, and they play the Raging Cajuns this weekend. So a huge opportunity tonight for the Bobcats. Well, you know, you look at this whole conference and there's some teams that I think a lot of people thought were going to be really good that are off to slow starts. I mean, you know, coach was telling us earlier, he thought Troy might be the best team in the entire conference and they're off to a really harsh start in conference play. Same with Little Rock, you know, Texas State gets close victories in both of those games. And you look up and down and you think, all right, this is exactly what you want. You get off to a hot start, you're five and one, you got everything in front of you, and I think the biggest key is you're playing in these games and you don't have to apologize for winning close games. The object here is to win. And early on with this Texas State team, you know, they had nine new guys to the roster this year. They lost a lot of close games, including the game you and I did earlier this year against UTSA. The only home loss, by That's the way. That's exactly the right. Only home loss so you take that into consideration, the fact that they've now figured out essentially who they are, they're getting better at what they do, and it's all equating to being able to close out games, and the biggest thing of all is they're getting wins. Well, as Danny Casper said earlier in the year, we didn't have the luck, now we do have the luck, so we'll see how that carries Texas State as we move forward in this one. Well, we have plenty coming up, plenty of pregame coverage. Chuck's keys the game, and we'll continue to break down this matchup as our gun pregame show continues. It's ULM and Texas State coming up from Strahan Coliseum.
Welcome back to Strand Coliseum. As you know, Gun Auto keeps things real simple. We're gonna make this real simple for ULM. Chuck, what do they have to do to win this one? Well, Mike, that's a loaded question. You know, they're coming in against a hot team and it's been really pretty much a struggle on the road. So they gotta get the roadblock out of their minds. They have yet to win a conference game on the road. And obviously, if they can get one here tonight, that would be a huge builder towards going forward in their schedule. Speaking of building, building blocks, you know, hard to believe with this squad, they're actually really good at blocking shots, and they do it quite a bit. So they're going to want to have to D up tonight and try to get Texas State out of their game, especially inside. Yeah, it has been tough for the Warhawks on the road this year. Oh, and seven. So they're still looking for their first con or road win, period, and that will be certainly a key. For Texas State, do you want to break them down for us here, Chuck? Yeah, you know, we talked about this just a couple of seconds ago about how Texas State has managed to play defense at an elite level. They are only allowing the opposition, get this, 63 points per game. Are you kidding me? That's in the top 20 in the entire country. And then I think if you can look and see maybe in a couple places where they have struggled, they've got to make their free throws. They're shooting under 70% under as a team. And, you know, in close games, that's the kind of thing that comes back to bite you. Um, that UTSA game that we did, they made some free throws in that game. They didn't make enough, though. And so if you're going to be playing in close games, you got to be able to make them down the stretch. But again, can't say enough about the job that Danny Casper has done with this team in a short time and got them with these five quick Sunbelt Conference victories to get going in really the meat of their schedule. And you know what's incredible is you don't realize it at first, but it was pointed out to us by Texas State's great SID that no one on this Bobcats team has been here for more than two years. So they don't have anyone who is a junior and has played here three years. They have juniors and seniors on the roster, but those are all transfers. So that's still a young team when you don't have a whole group that has played together for more than two years. And they're still, I think you can tell, you know, they are kind of molding together a little bit. And hey, we saw them early in the year. That's when the luck didn't go their way. And as uh, Danny Casper mentioned to us, and we talked about the start of the broadcast, now they've had the luck that come in their way. But is this more a reflection of, hey, it's a team starting to find their way and maybe making their luck for themselves? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, you mentioned it. I mean, one of two teams in the entire nation with no three-year players in the program, nine new guys that are here. So you would think if ever there was going to be a team that would struggle, it would be this Texas State team to start. But that clearly has not been the case. And, again, you know, we talked about this as well, you know, it's been a different guy every single night. And, you know, the way they've been winning games, I mean, Alex Peacock, how big has he been for the program here over the last few games? I mean, he's had two game-winning buckets in Texas State's last, you know, two of their last three games against Arkansas, Little Rock, and Troy. And again, you know, talking to Coach Casper this morning, he was talking about, yeah, you know, that UTSA game, as bad a loss as that was, did anybody think we were going to beat a team like Troy? So... You know, you want to be winning these games now. In conference, that's when it really counts. And I think they've really figured out some things about this year's team. Obviously, it's still a growing process, and there's still some things he would like to see get better. But things are definitely trending upward up here. Well, we'll take a look at this series, ULM and Texas State. They have played each other very frequently, and we'll break that down after this. Our pregame coverage leading up to a top-of-the-hour tip close to that between Texas State and ULM coming up shortly. Welcome back to the Gun Automotive Group pregame show presented by Gun Automotive Group, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. GunAuto.com. ULM comes in 7-9 and nine on the season. Texas State 12-7. and seven. The Warhawks, actually, they lead this all-time series, Chuck. But last year, as you see there, Texas State swept them 3 to nothing. They beat them in the final game of the regular season. They beat them in the quarterfinals of the conference tournament. And that's got to give this Bobcats team some confidence going into this matchup. I understand different teams, different year. But a lot of these guys were back for Texas State, and they were able to find a way, time in and time out, to win three different ways against the Warhawks. Well, I think it was interesting. You know, we were both talking to Keith Richard, the head coach of ULM, earlier today, and I think he's the Cajun version of the Rolling Stones guitarist, Keith Richard. But 
you know, he had a couple of teams three and four years ago that he was really, really fond of. And these were teams that were averaging, what, close to 15 wins a season. Well, he's got a, basically a new group over the last two years. And what he told us is, you know, this is essentially a new group trying to find its identity even now into their second year together. You know, they shoot the ball well from three. They're second in the league in free throw percentage. And they're third as far as assist turnover ratio. But, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you get a group and you're looking for a leader or you're looking for an alpha dog. And I think they're still trying to figure out maybe who that guy is, you know, especially in crunch time. Who's going to take over a game? And it was funny talking to Coach Richard. He said, you know, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. you got a couple of alpha dogs, and, you know, you're talking bad about them when you have them, but you need them, you know, in some games. And now when you don't have them, then that's kind of when you really want those guys. So, you know, I think we have an interesting matchup tonight because, you know, Texas State is still trying to figure out all these things and, you know, what exactly who they are. You know, a lot of people want to sleep on them to start the year, and now all of a sudden they find themselves at the upper echelon of the conference standings. You know, they can't be they can't be going to sleep on anybody. This is a Texas State team too that remember they reached the conference title game last year of the Sun Belt and they've won seven straight Sun Belt games at home. So this is a team that's been very good, very tough to play at home this year. And for ULM, yeah, they're gonna have to find that leader pretty quickly. Hey, it might be Jordan Harris, the senior guard out of San Antonio. We heard he has over 40 family members or friends in attendance. And this could be a guy, if you're looking for that breakout, who could have it today, their senior from just down the road. Yeah, I mean, nothing better than playing in front of friends and family. And in fact, you know, we were at shoot around today and wasn't it interesting that you know Texas State, when they were going through their shoot around drills, they made a point to say, hey, you know, this young man's gonna try to light it up tonight because he's playing in front of friends and family. So they're gonna have to keep an eye on, on Harris as well. But again, you know, these guys, they, they're adept at scoring and they also have three guys that are ranked in the top 30 as far as the scores in the conference. So, you know, they share the ball. But again, what Danny Casper has done every step of the way. You know, remember him all the way back in his days at UIW in the 90s before he went on to Stephen F and obviously left that program in way better shape than when he took it over. But this guy's going to make his mark with defense first. And I think what's really fun to watch as his coaching has kind of evolved over time is they've really become one of those team that, teams that shares the ball as well on offense. And I, I know the game that we did against UTSA, we thought, for the most part, Texas State dominated that game. They just couldn't find a way to close it out. Well, they've done a very good job of that here of late, obviously. Yeah, Texas State leads the Sun Belt, as you mentioned, 17th in the country in scoring defense, just 63 points per game. This is a ULM team just scoring a bit over 70. So it could be a defensive grind. We'll see which team emerges, the Bobcats or the Warhawks, the first of two meetings this year. Coming up in just a little bit, our pregame show winding down. Then we'll have basketball, Bobcats, Warhawks, the men getting going after the women took the court earlier today. We're back after this. We're getting ready to go here at Strahan Coliseum. It's a Sun Belt Conference matchup. You can see the history of Texas State basketball. This is a team that reached the NCAA tournament a couple of times. They were nearly there last year before falling to Troy in a conference title game. And as they try to march their way once again, here's the starting lineups for both teams are presented by IHOP. And we highlighted the stars in each of them, but some interesting additions to the starting lineup, Chuck, for Texas State, Alex Peacock, who we mentioned has been the game winner, who has hit their last two game-winning shots against Arkansas State and Troy has been a starter now has kind of emerged as that starter in the four spot for Texas State. And you talk about, you know, Trey Nottingham and Emmanuel King, Peacock, Pearson, Blunt. All those guys were singled out by Coach this morning talking about how they have raised the level of their play and how they're all chipping in as this season goes along. I mean, Again, it's hard to imagine that you could have this many newcomers to the program and, you know, given all the talent that they lost last year, as you said, they were a Sun Belt Conference Tournament finalist last year. And to be doing what they're doing this year, wreaking havoc in the Sun Belt Conference with all these fresh faces, it's, it's pretty something. 
You saw the starting lineup for ULM. One name on there, Michael Ertl, a 6'2 freshman guard from Indianapolis. He'll get the start for just the third time this year. Keith Richard says he gives him a little more scoring punch on offense in the guard position, as does Trey Lorenz Nottingham for Texas State, a junior from Moreno Valley, California. And he is inserted because one of their better guards, a guy who Danny Casper thought would be the go-to guy at point guard, Marlon Davis, has been out with an injury, got hurt against Troy five minutes into that game, so you lose your starting point guard. You come back with a junior transfer, and Lorenz, Trey Lorenz Nottingham has scored double digits in those two games he has started. And, you know, talking to Coach, too, you know, wasn't he proud of the fact that he said, you know, there's a lot of things that could have gone on this year that caused this team to cave, and every step of the way, they've met the challenge. I mean, you know, the last game we did out here earlier on in the year, remember, he was looking for a point guard, period. He feels like he's got a lot of the same guys, you know, some combo guard type guys, and every guy that he's plugged in there has kind of risen up and done the job. So, you know, obviously it's a tough blow. You lose a guy like Marlon Davis, especially because, heck, if nothing else, he's a sophomore. That makes him a veteran guy around here. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see you know, the challenges that continue to mount at Texas State to see if they continue to, you know, pick them up and slap them and knock them down and move on. Well, here's the guy who's been able to build his team up from challenges, Keith Richard, Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year in 2014-2015. And that's after ULM recovered from APR penalties that reduced scholarships and practice time from 2010 to 2014. So in 2014-2015, he won 14 conference games after they only won a combined 14 in the four years prior. So both Danny Casper and Keith Richard know how to build programs back up. And it's going to be a fascinating matchup here tonight in Strahan Coliseum. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget the 150 or so wins at Law Tech, too. So Richard is Louisiana through and through as he brings his Warhawks into Texas tonight. Quick touch and a turnover by ULM. That's something that they have struggled with. They had 10 first half turnovers and a loss at Lafayette, Louisiana on Saturday. And you'll see how active Texas State is on defense. I mean, good with their feet, good with their hands, poking it away early and get the ball themselves. Lorenz Nottingham bouncing around. Alex Peacock, too strong. Emmanuel King had it for a moment. There's Jordan Harris, the senior guard from San Antonio. Playing in front of friends and family. Leads this team nearly four assists per game. Sam Houston High School is a senior now, huh? It's hard to believe this. that much time has passed since he graduated from Hurricane High. Here's some youth though. Michael Ertl, a freshman. Misses off the back too strong. Sunbelt Conference matchup. Both these teams is a tough stretch. Texas State takes on the top team of the conference, the Raging Cajuns, on Saturday. That's the team that just beat the Warhawks. Shot clock down low. The three and a long three. And again, King almost had an arm on it. It's such a huge presence inside for Texas State. Big key is keeping them out of foul trouble. And the Bobcats 0 for 2, the first two shots. Are and errant threes. A touch foul down low. That goes on Alex Peacock. You see this La Monroe team. They run a lot of back screens and down screens. Very active underneath the hoop, running guys from one end of the court to the other. Texas State trying to get a little switch there, picked up a foul instead. Harris trying to find some space to the corner. Three rims around and good for Sam McDaniel. That's who we highlighted at the top of the broadcast. Yeah, and Harris doing an outstanding job. You know, he dribbled right through the double team. And then Texas State sent a third defender out to him and was able to kick it out, get a wide open shot for his teammate. Keith Richard did say he loves the way this team can shoot. They just need to find that consistent identity. Strong take, doesn't go, but Peacock will get to the line. The foul goes on Sam Alabacus. Peacock had a notion he was going to try to kick that and thought, you know what? Pretty close right here. I'm just going to take it up strong. Ends up getting the hoop and a free trip to the line here early. 
Well, we touched on what Danny Casper can do and has done for the places he's been. UIW, Stephen F. Austin, now his fifth year here at Texas State. As Peacock hits the first, Texas State's on the board. Yeah, 500 plus wins. And just a treat, man, he's always on. I mean, he's coaching every second of every day. I was watching him walk around earlier this, night, a few minutes ago, right before we started the game in the hallway, and he was pacing and thinking and always ready to get his guys up for the next game. And Texas State still looking for a field goal, though, nearly three minutes into this one. But at their pace, again, not a team that scores a lot of points. They hold their opponents down as well. And the shot clock's down under five. Munnings for three. Off the back of the rim and down to the Bobcats. Yeah, Munnings is another guy you got to keep an eye on. He's another guy for ULM that scores in double figures and he can definitely knock the top off that basket. A pump fake by Nottingham, short on the try. There's Harris pushing the pace. McDaniel transition three. Sam McDaniel has all six points of the Warhawks. And Coach Casper giving his players a look. He had two guys back there, and they still let him have a free shot. That's what you cannot do against this team. They struggle shooting the ball inside the arc. So that's where you got to make them take their shots if you can. Peacock going to work and gets another foul called on the Warhawks. Well, the first half of tonight's CSN basketball telecast is brought to you by Nissan of Bernie. For better selection and better prices, visit Nissan of Bernie. Well, the scoring hasn't been there. Credit Peacock for being aggressive. He's already gotten a couple of fouls drawn on the Warhawks. That one goes on Munnings, his first, and the team's second. And that forces Travis Munnings out to the win. He's their second leading scorer, the junior from Freeport, Bahamas. A preseason Sunbelt selection. A step through and a travel before the foul. To the ire of the crowd, though. <laughs> Not only the crowd. Nigel Pearson's going, come on, man. That was a great entry pass. That's a tough one. That's a tough, tough turnover for Texas State. McDaniel space again. Off the front, no good. Trey Lorenz Nottingham's been a spark plug as he dribbles with the basketball. Kick to Blunt. Too strong over the top. Texas State has started 0 for 3 from beyond the three-point line. Now 0 for 4 from the floor. Yeah, we talked about Texas State's prowess on defense, but you know, tip your cap to ULM. They're getting back too and not giving away anything cheap here early on. Harris stuck and dragged the foot, and that's another turnover for Louisiana Monroe. Well, a back and forth start early. Sam McDaniel has been the offense for the Warhawks. Six points for their leading scorer. Texas State still looking to find the offense. They have not made one from the floor. 0 for 4. They trail by 5. Louisiana Monroe up 6-1 to one on Texas State, and they've been led by their leading scorer, Sam McDaniel, who's just decided to knock everything down himself. And I think that's one of the things that ULM has been really good at for the most part this year, and that's getting off to quick starts. You know, in a lot of these games that they've lost in conference play, they've been up in most of them at half. So this is what they do. The question is, will they be able to sustain it? But you got to like their energy. I mean, they're coming down, they're getting rhythm shots, and I'm more impressed with what they've been able to do on the defensively, on the defensive end, obviously, up 6-1 early. Harris did have the assist on both those, Jordan Harris from San Antonio. Now, CSN's first half scoreboard is sponsored by John Wayne Service Company. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all, 210-293-6700. As we mentioned, scoring, Texas State gets on the board. Nottingham for three. Yeah, the old Sheriff of Nottingham. Maybe that'll get the whole team going. It didn't, didn't go down smooth. It rattled around in there, but sometimes that's all it takes. Every field goal has been a three-pointer so far tonight. Two-point lead for the Warhawks early going. And Alabacus moved his feet. 
Now, just great help defense from Texas State. They rolled a double and then sent a third guy in there and really made it tough to try to get anything going except to move your feet and turn it over. Third turnover already, too, for the Warhawks. Texas State hasn't led in this one. Just over five minutes into the first half. Nigel Pearson, their leading scorer, dishes it down low to Eric Terry just into the game. Slapped around, out of bounds, and off the Bobcats. Again, Law Monroe very active on the defensive end. And I'm really impressed with Alabacus' ability to just grind in the middle and deny anything, whether he's guarding his own man or just keeping Bobcat guards from getting into the paint. Yeah, he's a sophomore from Perth, Australia, one of three players from Australia on this roster. And Keith Richard said they had a guy who was one of their best ever who came to Louisiana Monroe and then kind of went back to his country and told his fellow countrymen how good the program was. They followed him here. Now open up a pipeline to the other side of the world. Tell you what, that was a tough break, huh? Texas State had three guys under the hole. Try to corral the rebound, couldn't find the ears, and Harris ends up with it. Kick to the wing, and Munnings can't find the touch. And then Travis Munnings gets it right back, and he'll go to the rack, but he slid the feet. Hey, what, calling it tie here early. Oh, offensive foul on Alabakis. Well, that's his second. Let's take a look. Throw a little chicken wing off there. That offhand. A costly one. All of your first half instant replays are brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7 nights and weekends, 210-656-1000. So Alabacus comes out. That's Roderick Taylor who's now in, manning the middle. Taylor and Terry fighting. Taylor ends Nottingham no good. Again, you see some of these shots are really off. A lot of it is because ULM is playing so well on the defensive end, and then look at that. Scooping slash by Jordan Harris. Found some space around the outstretched arms of Eric Terry. A really nice job getting the whole quick step. Throwing it up with the left. First field goal from inside the arc tonight. As ULM tries to make life difficult for Texas State. We heard they may try a few different looks on defense tonight to try to spark some momentum. Right now they've kept the Bobcats off the board, but there's Pearson who forces his way to the rack. Yeah, when in doubt, just take it strong to the hole. And Pearson obviously has some jets. Good hops. Got himself elevated and got himself a clean look at the cup point blank range. Sophomore guard from Beaumont, Texas. 14 point per game score. Michael Ertl kicks to McDaniel who's had the hot hand. And a heat check cools him off significantly. Texas State doing a really good job there. Rolling with the switch, forcing a bad shot. At least one with a very poor result. Really nice job by Pearson as we take another look at that. I like Travis Munnings, Nigel Pearson, a preseason third team Sun Belt selection. Texas State picked to finish significantly higher than ULM. Warhawks picked to finish last, 12th out of 12th. Bobcats picked to finish sixth. They're just a game off the conference lead, only one loss in the Sun Belt so far. Ball on the deck, ripped away from Peacock by Michael Ertl. The way both of these teams are playing defense, if you can't handle the ball, there's a really good chance it's going to lead to a turnover. Second turnover now for Texas State. ULM has four of them. McDaniel absorbs the contact, no good. Pearson slapped it right down, and then a big block, but goes down. To ULM. ULM is just attacking right now. And they got a couple of threes to go early, and now they're trying to work it inside, and we talked about it. They've struggled shooting 
when it's not a three-pointer, but they're off to a pretty good start tonight and get another turnover. Travis Munnings out and running. Back-to-back -back swipes by ULM and then a foul right in front of Danny Casper. And frustration from Trey Lorenz, Nottingham. That's the first on Nottingham, the second on Texas State. ULM continues to push the pace. Warhawks lead by four. Early going in an important Sunbelt Conference game between the Warhawks and the Bobcats. Let's take a look at the Sunbelt Conference scoreboard brought to you by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. The big one there, UT Arlington picked to win the league, leading ULL, Lafayette, Louisiana, who is currently undefeated in conference. They're 15-3 on the season, 5-0, but UT Arlington was picked to win the league. They're up seven, and that is the ULL team that comes into this place, Strahan Coliseum, on Saturday to take on Texas State. Texas State's got its hands full right now. With the other one, the other Louisiana, Monroe. Absolutely. I mean, you just look at right now, it's sheer desire. I mean, ULM is out rebounding the Cats 11 to 4 in this game. But Texas State's got to ratchet it up a little bit on the uh, intensity meter. Also, a couple of steals for the Warhawks. And almost a three knocked down by Ertl, tipped around. And when I talk about intensity, there you go. Harris comes up with a loose ball. Had one of those plays earlier. Munnings top of the arc, no good. I'll tell you what, this team is adept at three-point shooting right now, having a hard time finding the mark in Texas State. The beneficiary, no doubt. This could be a lot worse than it is. Same kind of thing happened to ULM in their loss last week. They forced ULL to miss its first 11 shots but only made one of their own in that stretch. Never got any breathing room. And there is Texas State. Climbing back. Shelby Adams, young man from Converse right down the road. And that's what I'm talking about. That's sheer desire. He got to the rack, missed the first one, but stayed after it and got the put back. And as a consequence, the squad's only down two now. And a freshman coming off a double-digit game in their narrow win. And there's another freshman, Michael Ertl, dropping in his first two points. Adam's thinking, hey, it worked once. I'm going to do it again. Why not? Cut off at the pass. He's though, got this the time. hot hand. Right? Darius Duncan in the game. Trying to force something. Step back. Why not? Well, Duncan was thinking, you know, I think for a split second he was thinking three, and he's like, you know what? We've not had our way. we got to pound this thing inside, and he too gets one at point blank range. Big hedge by Emmanuel King. Recovered well. Ertl firing up again, in and out. Well, Nigel Pearson pretty much does it all for Texas State, leads them in scoring. Second in rebounding, and second in assists, although Marlon Davis, who led the team in assists, has been out with an injury since hurting his knee against Troy. Pearson step back, rattles through. Yeah, the old pounded into Emmanuel King, back to the basket, then gets the kick out. Wide open three, and Texas State finally starting to heat up. And they had the lead for the first time tonight. Trailed six to one. Took them three minutes to hit a field goal. But on top by a point, and a timeout by the Warhawks. The Louisiana Monroe wants to talk it over. Texas State has roared into the lead. Bobcats up by one midway through the first. It was a slow start, but Texas State has now climbed into the lead. 13 to 12, a little over eight minutes left in the first half. The guy who's led them, the one we talked about, Nigel Pearson, the team's leading scorer. Yeah, and I think it all started on the defensive end. Actually, Mike, you know, they cleaned up a little bit of that rebounding problem that they had to start this game. And then, hey, out of the timeout, I'm sure Coach Casper said, you know what, we can't make an outside shot. Let's get to the hole. And that's exactly what they did, you know? The young man from Converse gets in there, gets a bucket, and then all of a sudden they knock down three in a row. And just like that, they got the lead. Daniel, tough shot, nearly went down. That's another thing that 
both coaches kind of alluded to, Keith Richard especially. He says he's a great coach when the team shoots well. <laughs> that is a way of making the, the sets, the plays, everything you draw up look better. So a play like that, that goes down, you look great. If it doesn't, it's just another tough break. You know, and it was so funny talking to both of these guys too, and it's like, look, I mean, obviously both of these teams are well coached. They run their sets, they work on drills, they do all these different things. And then even Coach Casper said, you know, sometimes it just comes down to sheer luck. You know, we didn't have any luck in that UTSA game and got a couple breaks here lately. Things are rolling our way, but hey, man, you, you want to win. You can go to any winning team. I guarantee you, every one of them will tell you they had some good fortune along the way. You don't have to apologize for it. You just roll with it when it's happening. Here's a zone look from the Warhawks. Texas State trying to figure out how to break that. King almost got it. McDaniel the board, though. Sam McDaniel started hot for ULM. Back-to-back -back threes at the first six points of the game. It hasn't scored since. And that was in the first minute of this half. Oh, um, Emmanuel King, I mean, that was his first shot of the game, believe it or not. Sometimes it's just the flow, but I thought Texas State did a really good job moving the basketball. That's what you have to do against the zone. Make the defense move by moving the ball. Shelby Adams committed that foul. That's his first. Brandon Newman with the basketball, junior from Hawthorne, California. Backup point guard behind Michael Ertl. Step through, another backup guard, Marvin Jean-Pierre. Or Jean-Pierre, who had been a starter, kind of lost his spot with Ertl's emergence. But a double-digit scorer this season, and a turnover the other way for the Bobcats. Well, Jean-Pierre, I don't know how he was able to keep his pivot foot down on that. He stopped on a dime, was able to knock that down, and then I'm not so sure he stepped out over here, but ref saw it different, but Jean-Pierre. Toe tap. Yeah, that's nice. Ballet like feet strength. Get up on that toe. Oh, you can stop on a dime like that, man. You create, create a little space for yourself, and he did exactly that. Alabacus flashed, didn't get it until he was late, and then traveled. He's saying he got pushed, but I don't know that he wasn't camped under there either, so I'm going to get you on something. That's a, with all the, yeah. all the bigs from Travel? Australia lately, huh? Oh, just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, what's up with all the travels? Well, that too. They're calling it tight. But we've seen that, you know, Mike, in all these games that we've done, a lot of referees are calling the, the traveling a lot tighter than I can remember in recent memory. But it's been consistent. Bounces out back to ULM. Hasn't been the prettiest offensive game, but really this is the pace that Texas State forces you to play at. Well, they can bog you down with the best of them the way they play D. But I'm impressed. I mean, ULM has come out here, played very well. A lot of their shots aren't falling, but they're getting a lot of clean looks. And we talked about their prowess and their ability to hit the ball from three range. They're doing a pretty good job scoring inside as well. Another turnover by Texas State leads to almost a run out. But a kick out, McDaniel just off again. Ward snatched up by Darius Duncan, ahead to Trey Lorenz, Nottingham, but another turnover by the Bobcats. Well, coming up at halftime, and the Home Mesters halftime show, we'll take a look at the first half and see what's in store for the Bobcats this year. Plus, talk to Texas State women's basketball coach, Zena Ray Antoine, Coach Z, as they call her. She just picked up her 100th win here at Texas State. And of course, first half highlights and the stats from this closely contested first half of action. We've got a low scoring game, but excellent effort on the defensive end of the floor of both of these squads. McDaniel keeps shooting. This one just rimmed out. Down to Nenelko Priovic. He tries to slide down and work his way to the post. Nottingham for three. That one's good. Another kick it in, kick it out. 
Really good job by the Bobcats moving the ball, finding the open guy. There's that scoring that Danny Casper talked about, that the punch, the pop that Trey Lorenz Nottingham brings to the lineup since he entered the starting lineup three games ago. Well, it was almost like Eric Terry on that previous possession, the guy that kicked it out did it. He was already thinking like a pass ahead. He comes up with a rebound here, but he was doing a good job doing his work before he even got the ball. Got good space, and then when the double team came, he kicked it. And now Terry wants that ball. Doing diligent work down to the paint. Straight away, three, no good. A long rebound there and a chance for a run out, but ULM chooses to slow it down. Jordan Harris getting a breather right now. Already a couple assists from the senior from San Antonio. Michael Ertl got bumped, and that'll be the second on Shelby Adams. The fourth on Texas State. The Bobcats have used solid work on the glass and some timely three-point shooting to take a two-point lead. Texas State on top, 16-14. For the Bobcats, take a look at the 1960 NAIA National Champions. Well, Texas State, not in the NAIA anymore, but got back to the postseason for the first time since 1997 last year. And here's a look at our, first, at our game summary presented by Nissan of Bernie. For better selection and better prices, visit Nissan of Bernie. Sam McDaniel started hot, but since then, ULM has not made a three-pointer. No one has made a three outside of him on that team. And we talked about what a great three-point shooting squad this is. And, you know, you got to give some credit to Texas State's defense. I mean, to hold these guys at 2 of 12 from three, that's doing something. McDaniel close, couldn't get it. And then a foul over the top. It goes on the offense. The easy man on the road. Roderick Taylor commits the infraction. His but first. Isn't it interesting, Mike? You know, talked about the slow start that Texas State was off to and how they were getting obliterated on the boards. Now they've cleaned it up. I mean, they're only down 15-14 now on the rebounding edge. And, you know, as a consequence, they find themselves with a little better fortune on the scoreboard, too. Bob down low to Terry. Spin back into the paint, and he's hammered from behind. And Taylor, in a matter of seconds, has just picked up his second foul. Well, all I can say is since Eric Terry came into this ball game, he is really exuding a lot of effort and again doing a lot of his work before he gets the ball getting good post position and then outstanding spin move there before he got hacked terry's a redshirt sophomore from houston redshirted last year this is first year playing for texas state that's the kind of thing we talked about with not a lot of experience really no one has played more than two consecutive years here on this bobcats roster making them one of the newest teams in college basketball. Well, he's just a sophomore. Well, you know, it's that. We talk about it being a different guy every night. You know, we talk about the sledding being tough for the Bobcats, shooting the ball early on in this game when they're shooting at, you know, roughly 35%. Terry comes in, just super active, and is one of those guys that helps give him an initial boost. Well, it's a 5-0 run for Texas State. ULM hasn't scored in nearly four minutes. Probing by Jean Pierre. He shots off the side. Yeah, showed him a double team look. Maybe thought he had a little clear path to the hole and just missed the shot though. But Texas State junking up their defense a little bit. Lob down low again to Terry, and again it results in a foul. And for Alabacus, that's his third. Really quick to the ball, just beating his man to the spot. So Alabacus is going to stay in with three fouls. He's the starting center. And I guess you have to at this point because backup center Roderick Taylor has two already. Tell you what, he's awful handsy down there <laughs> for a guy with three fouls. Got a little tip drill there. Hot potato pass, too hot to handle. It is another turnover for the Bobcats. That's their eighth. 
Yeah, you gotta be quick when you see the double team coming, but you can't rush, if that makes any sense. I mean, you gotta be in control. And a good pass coming out of the double team, but we thought when that entry pass went down there into the corner, there just wasn't a guy available. Well, that's one area that Danny Casper is really pleased with in these last four games. Texas State's assist to turnover ra ratio, overwhelmingly positive in favor of assists. Now, more turnovers than assists so far in the first half. And a foul picked up by Eric Terry. Yeah, you know, it's always fun watching basketball games. Sometimes if you watch the ball, you miss the story. Watch the big fellas in the middle. They have been going tete-a-tete -tete in this one. And Alabaca is still pushing hard with three fouls. Yeah, that's a great battle right now. Jean Pierre fires, knocks it through. Now, good job defensively inside by Terry. Not going and falling for the switch. Making it hard where they had to kick it out, but ULM, is they have a penchant for doing, they can knock down those threes, and they got one there. Looking for Pearson. Got it back in the corner. Alabacus reached with the three fouls. And Pearson scoops it in. He's having a little hard time with his passing right now. And after he almost threw another one away, he found the ears. He thought, you know what? Enough of this passing. I'm going to go down to the hole and get me two. A pretty low scoring first half. Pearson, seven points, leads all scorers. Texas State gets a little more breathing room with a minute left in the first half. Jordan Harris just couldn't find it off the front of the rim. But Travis Munnings slinks back, intercepts, and finishes. Yeah, my steal, my bucket. Just good hustle right there. Anticipating the pass, and then Munnings getting the bunny. That sounds like the title of a, a pretty good biography. <laughs> my steal, my bucket. I always thought, I thought you were talking about Munnings with the bunny. I thought that would be a good That's children's a good book, too. right? That's a great children's book title. There's money. He's just sitting back. And yeah, got that around Terry. He had that big arm yeah, on I mean, the backboard. Terry doing all he could do. You know, he forced him to the weak side, but he had a burst of speed, had a little head of steam going towards the hole. And tough to defend one on one when a guy gets a little momentum going towards the bucket. So ULM came out quick. They were up 6-1. to one. Texas State forced them into kind of a long slog and came back to take the lead, and now it's been back and forth. But yeah, ULM, the seven points off the turnovers from the Bobcats, and they're going to extend pressure, kind of speed up this almost final possession. It was a little odd. The pressure came late. Even picking them up at half court, only one guy seemed to know what the drill was. We're into it now, though. Deep three from Nottingham. Swish! Hello. That's one way to break a defense. Make him stretch it out and guard you from the parking lot. Nottingham is three for three from behind the arc. All nine of his points are back there. Yeah, he saved their bacon tonight so far with that. Hunting steps into it. Too strong. The putback. And it goes through by Kier Dang. First minutes of action for Dang, the redshirt junior from Australia, one of the three Australian natives. And he gets it in to cut into some of that momentum from Texas State. But the Bobcats, the 23 to 21 halftime lead here. So a narrow back and forth game. We will have plenty of coverage coming up on the Home Besters halftime show. We'll take a look back at the first half, highlights, stats, and more. All that coming up back and forth. The Bobcats on top. They're looking for their sixth straight win, and they lead by two here at the break. Halftime show. If you need to sell your home quickly, call Home Besters. The We Buy Ugly Houses people, 1 800 44 buyer. Well, Texas State leads at the half, and Texas State 
also got the win earlier tonight. And I'm pleased to be joined by Texas State women's basketball head coach, Santa Ray Antoine. And coach, you had a very special moment at the end of that game, your 100th win. What did that mean to see the messages, the celebration uh, from your team? You know, first I, I was shocked, and then that, secondly, I just felt I was blessed. You know, God's blessed me throughout my, my life on this earth here the last 40 some odd years. A lot of mentors were there. It's great to see the mentors, to have my parents on there, to have my husband in the stands, my sister-in-law, and of course the fans that have been with me as well, and the student athletes. I mean, you know, as a former student athlete, none of this would be ever possible if it wasn't for the student athlete and all their hard work, and specifically in this season with this team. What a great group of young women. I'm really happy to be able to coach them. What does it mean to be here at Texas State? I know, you know your husband's with the football program. You're here with the women's basketball program to have this connection and this bond uh, to this campus. I think first and foremost, uh, the best thing about being in Texas is we're both Texans and, and we're back home. And so I think anytime you have an opportunity to be at home and sell your home state and to sell a school like Texas State with all the wonderful resources that we have, it makes it really easy. I always say we're like that gem, that emerald shining right in the middle of, you know, uh, of Texas people aren't aware of. And when they get here, they understand it. And we have a lot more than rivers and scenery. We've got some great academic programs and some pretty good athletic programs as well. And so. You know, I, I can't be more blessed again to have this opportunity and be able to share it with the student athletes so they can have the experiences I did as a student athlete. So a nice win over the Warhawks earlier today. And I know coaches always are taking it one game at a time. So now you have ULM pass you. What do you focus on going into this weekend and then the next few games here? You know, very much like ULM last year, ULM beat us on a buzzer beater. The same thing happened for us as well against Lafayette. So I think it's going to be really important that we stay hungry and our team understands that I'm very fortunate to have five seniors. Three of them have been with me for the entire time as student athletes from their freshman year. I think there's a lot to be said for their maturity and we can help us, you know, help us understand what is our long-term goal is. And again, like you said, it's game by game. That's what all coaches look forward to. I look forward to a really tough contest, to be honest with you. They've got some pretty tough uh, players, both interior and exterior. And they have a really unique player, a kid by the name of Nakia Jones, who a lot of people know, uh, who um, looks deceiving um, as far as the basketball player goes. But she can score in all three layers. So defensively, we're going to have to do a good job. But I'm happy to be back here in our home confines. Well, Coach, again, congratulations, and thank you. We appreciate you taking the time with us here at halftime. Thank you. Eat them up, cats. That's Coach Z, as the, the team calls her. Congratulations on the 100th win. We'll come back, break down the highlights, the stats, and all of this as Texas State leads by two here at the break. Welcome back to the Homebesters Halftime Show. You need to sell your home quickly. Call Homebesters, the We Buy Ugly Houses people, 1-800-44-BUYER. Well, our spotlight tonight is an update on Texas State, how the program has been doing up to this point in the season. And Steam Master Cleaning is proud to spotlight athletic performance. They want to keep you proud of your home with spot-free carpet. Steam Master Cleaning cleans deep, dries fast. So here's Brent Freeman with a look at the Bobcats. The way the Bobcats have been playing lately, the more appropriate name might be the Cardiac Cats. The Bobcats have won five straight games, their longest winning streak in seven years. A lot of those games have come down to the wire, including a pair of game winners made by junior Alex Peacock, first against reigning Sunbelt Tournament champion Troy, and most recently on the road at Little Rock. Yeah, we called a play out of the timeout. Um, the point guard, he came up, he wasn't open. Uh, I think Shelby was the two guard at the time. He popped down, he wasn't open. Nedja went to the corner. So I just came up, Nigel gave me the ball. I knew I had like 3.2 seconds to make something happen. And <laughs> made something happen. Uh, each and every game has been really stressful and intense. Like, <laughs> the game, after the game, it's like, ah, you know, like, during the game, like, your body's tense, every play matters. So, I mean, it's exciting at the same time. Uh, like, my people at home, we tell you, like, man, you're gonna give you a heart attack. <laughs> As a result of the win streak, the Bobcats are out to a 5 and one start in Sunbelt Conference play. Good for a tie for second place, and the Cats are only a half game out of first. And more importantly, the Bobcats have already won three games on the road, and winning away from home would go a long way towards the Bobcats' ultimate goal of winning a Sunbelt championship. Well, I think that's huge. That's probably the biggest thing, is that we've won close games on the road. Now, we've won two close games at home, too. But, uh, but, but winning on the road, I told the guys, winning on the road is like winning, uh, is like winning a game and a half in conference because so many teams do not win on the road. So uh, they need to be applauded. Three road wins so far out of four. And uh, I'm very proud of them. 
Although the Bobcats have survived some close finishes to start the season, the reality is there's probably more in their future as there's still 12 games left in the regular season before the start of the Sunbelt Tournament in March. We have to level up. If we can go to another notch and take, we all take it to, to another level as a team, then I feel like we can become, we can win the conference. Honestly, I feel like we're in a, we're in a good position to compete for a conference championship. We have a few uh, hiccups every now and then. Like I said, we've, we've been up on teams, but uh, if we are able to keep our composure and stay how we've been playing, uh, we, we should, be, should be good for the season. If the Bobcats can beat the Warhawks tonight, that would make it six wins in a row for Texas State, something the program hasn't done since 2003. For the Citywide Sports Network, I'm Brandt Freeman. So it is a lead for Texas State, but a two-point lead as you just heard. They try to go for one of their longest win streaks in over seven years. We'll see if they can do that. But right now, let's take a look at the highlights, see how Texas State got out in front. And our first half highlights tonight are brought to you by the San Antonio Express News. Real news and real insights for over 150 years. Well, it was a lot of Nigel Pearson for Texas State. Yeah, Bobcats shooting a lot of blanks early, but then Pearson seemed to get it going a little bit. Ended up three of four in the first half shooting the ball and you know a lot of pounding the ball inside and got it got some of the inside stuff going which also then opened up the outside game and again can't say enough about the job Trey Nottingham has done in this game. Three of five shooting all three of his shots that he knocked down were from the three point line and then for ULM I mean they're only shooting 31 percent but Munnings doing a really good job and before that, Sam McDaniel, you know, at least keeping these guys in the game. I mean, if you're ULM and you see how much they're hustling right here, Munning with a steal and then the hoop, but you're you're shooting 31% in a basketball game at the half and you're only down two, that's a win for you. Now we've talked about this team being a first half team. They're gonna have to ratchet up in the second half, but again, can't say enough about the job Texas State did in terms of getting rebounds. They were getting clobbered early in this game. Tighten it up, they've now got the lead, not only in that stat, but also on the scoreboard. Turnovers are gonna be something that Coach Casper doesn't really feel too good about at the half, having eight of those, but you know, they're doing a good job of moving the ball and if they can clean up some things, and I think they're gonna like their chances in the second half. Uh, first half stats brought to you by the San Antonio Express News. That'll do it for the first half. Second half from Strahan Coliseum comes your way next. A balanced first half leads us into the second 20 minutes of action. Texas State leads 23 to 21. The Bobcats are looking for their first six game win streak since the 03 04 season. It's been that long and on their first five game win streak since 2011. So an impressive start. And I think I've been impressed with how good they have been at home this year. Basically unblemished. Six wins in a row since that game that you know, they don't talk about because we were here last time. But <laughs> right. since the opener, actually, at home when they lost to UTSA, and that was the last time we were here since then, brand new ball club in straight hand Coliseum. No, you know, and I thought what was interesting, or one of the many things that was interesting when we were talking to Coach Casper this morning was that, you know, in all the years this guy has coached, we're talking 500-plus wins. He told us that that was the most, the, the toughest loss that he's ever suffered as a head coach in that UTSA game. He said, you know, I've squandered leads before as a coach, but nothing quite like that one. I was, I was astonished that he wore that one harder than any other one that he's ever taken. Straight away three, Nottingham, of course. He comes out like he did in the first. Yeah, that's one of those you look at the stat sheet and you go, wow, oh, okay, that guy's shooting over 50% from the field. So is Nigel Pearson. Let's see if we can get them both going on. Just like that, largest lead of the game for the Bobcats. How close this one's been, Alabacus traveled. There's definitely something that he is doing that the refs have seen. That's the third travel called on the sophomore, Sam Alabacus. Well, it was a really nice pass, but Emmanuel King doing a great job, at least making it a difficult one. And by the time Alabacus got his hands on the ball, he really had bad position and was underneath the cup and paid the price by walking. Pearson probing. Step back. Yes. Find the hot hands, Michael. Much different flow, much different feel. 
to the start of this half as opposed to the last one. Well, to start the first, Texas State had just one point about three minutes in. <laughs> right. Now they've come out and knocked down back-to-back -back shots and have jumped out to a seven-point lead. But Harris answers right back. Well, that was a great shot, but Munnings with a baby of a pass before the defense could even respond. That was nice. Pearson going to try to answer back. Why not? Baskets falling left and right here to open the second. Yeah, had one squad that shot 40% in the first half, the other one 31. Now we got a shooting contest. That's what we like, especially Pearson. But a timeout from Keith Richard. Texas State cannot be stopped. And hopes the timeout will cool them off. Pearson, Nottingham, firing. Bobcats lead by seven. Texas State has come out firing, extended a two-point lead to seven, and they already have eight points here to start this second half. So about eight points in 90 seconds, where it took them, again, nearly three minutes to hit a field goal to start this game. Well, I think the best part about that is, is the fact that, you know, you had two guys, Nottingham and Pearson, and they were both combined six of nine shooting in that first half. And we talked about how tough it was to get buckets. Well, they come out, <laughs> share the ball a few times, they combine for three more shots, they're three for three now, and Texas State quickly extends their lead because of it. 31 to 24, tonight's second half of CSN Basketball is presented by MySA.com, largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. Sam McDaniel doing an outstanding job. That was not a pass, but well, he read that all the way. Just an errant shot. He gets the ball in midair and gets the put back. Nottingham going to fire again and again. <laughs> Somebody went back and sat by a campfire at halftime. This dude is slinging it. Trey Lorenz Nottingham, five for five behind the three-point line. The dude from Fantastic Four flame on. And no one picks up Michael Ertl. An easy basket for the freshman. Yeah, somebody's got to help. Don't want to make it that easy. There's the contrast. Louisiana Monroe only four for 16. By himself, Nottingham has made five. Peacock tried the pump fake. The zone has slowed the offense a bit. Nottingham making it happen. Another three put up, no good. But a foul down low. And again, tonight's second half of CSN Basketball is presented by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. So Blunt got knocked down with a foul, didn't come over there. It came on the rebound attempt. They're just the ball underneath the basket. The foul goes on McDaniel, his first, and the first this half for ULM. Quick ball movement, Pearson for three. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's you got to go with the guys that are hot. And I really like what Texas State was doing there. They kept swinging their bigs, both of them, from one side of the floor to the other, and it was causing a lot of confusion for ULM. And they swing it back the other way and get another wide open three. Pearson and Nottingham back and forth for Texas State, and a travel by Sam McDaniel. Now it's all coming together for Texas State. We talked about this at the top as. Well, as ULM has played this year in the first half of games and found themselves in, what, three of their five league games, they had to leave it at the half. So now four of six, they just have not been able to do it for whatever reason for stretches in the second half, and it's really cost them. Largest lead of the game for Texas State. And tonight's second half scoreboard is sponsored by IHOP. Visit IHOP.com. That may have been a little bit of a rut shot, but hey, if you're Nigel Pearson and you come on and you've stroked a bunch of shots, 
to start the second half. For sure, you got to test the heat check every now and then. Yeah, that was only his second miss of the night. Why not? Tipped down to Nottingham. We know he's been on fire. Take it. Emmanuel King going to work. Left-handed scoop. No good. Ball on the deck. Knocked out of bounds off of ULM. Brings the ball to Texas State after the timeout. And sparked by Nottingham and Pearson. The Bobcats have extended it out to a nine-point edge. 37-28 Bobcats. This was a two-point game of the half. Now a nine-point lead for Texas State in a large part thanks to the guard, Trey Lorenz Nottingham, who just hasn't missed. Yeah, I mean, isn't it interesting, Michael, how easy this game is and how smooth everything looks when shots just fall? I mean, of course Texas State's built their lead up. I mean, they're shooting 63% to start the second half and busting 80% of their threes. So, yeah, that's one of those... Lightning took a while to cause some friction in terms of the uh, the shots. But, man, the lightning strikes have come quickly here for Texas State, and they've been able to stretch this thing out pretty quick. One thing Danny Casper talked about, he thinks his team has now in this kind of towards the later to end part of the season done a better job protecting leads. This will be a good test for the Bobcats. Not out of the woods yet, but up nine and a lot of basketball left. Now we got a foul on the floor, and yeah, you see Munnings was just a smidge late getting over there, was called for the block. Boy, he paid the price. He took a shot right in the mouth. That's the worst one, right? Did he lose a tooth, too? He sure did. Mercy. Then that's literally the worst. I tell you what, that's a tough kid. Elbow right in the chops, and well, I'll tell you what. That cannot be fun. Well, all second half replays are presented by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry, 24-7 nights and weekends, 210-656-1000. Man, oh. there's just so many things that can happen right there. I hope that's just the, the least of his problems. You know, you got to worry about being concussed, too, when you take a shot like that to the mouth. And Emmanuel King also... Had to come out. He's being attended to behind Texas State's bench because that tooth, you know, bit him or you know, clawed into him. I imagine. Wow! I didn't elbow even to the tooth. That. Tooth to the elbow. Shot clock winding down. High looping rainbow doesn't hit, and it is a shot clock violation. For the ninth turnover for Texas State. You know, it's an interesting sport and in how it's evolved and. You talk about not being a contact sport. Tell that to that young man. Mercy. I hate going to the dentist, so that even hurts worse just looking at it. Step back jumper, Harris, no good. Munnings, understandably, in some pain over there. He just got a tooth ripped out of his mouth. And there's Emmanuel King, who essentially had the tooth claw into his arm. Yeah, it looks like he's doing the claw right now with his arm as he gets... I don't know if he's getting stitched up over there, but they're gluing him up, it looks like. Sanitizing that, uh, cleaning any bite mark, I guess. Step back attempt. Jean Pierre is shot no good. Well, let's hope the Tooth Fairy's kind to that young man tonight and stick it under his pillow, at least to get some cash out of it. I don't know if it still works like that when you're an adult. <laughs> I have never lost a tooth in my adult teeth, but I don't think you get money for it anymore. I don't want to find out. There's Eric Terry, King's backup. He's done some good work underneath the glass all game. Man, he's got four. You're not kidding. I mean, he's been, I think, one of the unsung heroes of this game. He's part of the, the crew that came in off the bench and has provided quite a spark for this Bobcat team tonight. Daniel slid the feet, so another travel. The floor just seems a little slick for ULM tonight. Yeah, just a little quick, but I'll tell you what, it's bang, bang. But the rest have been consistent with it all night. But they see Mr. Terry doing his best work of the night, washing windows. My rebound, my putback. Let's bring him out to our cars. My windows are pretty dirty. 
I don't think he'd want to do our cards. <laughs> but he cleaned the glass well up there. Yes, indeed. Nottingham for three. And all good things come to an end there. Oh, First look at miss, this. But he gets the yeah. hustle. They weren't used to him missing. Another one. And then Peacock's wide open. He lays it in. Yeah, they just had ULM just discombobulated with just sheer effort. Pounding the glass right there. Three cracks, finally get it to go. And I thought Pearson was going to go right back up with it, but came down with it on the floor and went right back up to get the two. Texas State shooting over 50% from the floor this half. Largest lead of the night for the Bobcats. And a foul as Harris drives strong. And he takes a hard hit. Well, it's such a great first half. Doing exactly that. Texas State tried to cut him off at the pass, but he's going to get a trip to the free throw line for his aggressiveness. Jordan Harris, one of the better free throw shooters on this team. There's a big cheer from his fan group when he hit that basket right before halftime. But Harris looks like he's still in some pain, and now he's looking at his elbow. Yeah, I mean, you talk, shake that out. Right. Talk about. This team as a whole, how well they shoot free throws, but I think that's always the untold story of guys going to the line. I mean, you got to concentrate, knock these down, but kind of hard to do sometimes if you just get clocked. Harris making it look fairly easy there. You're going down there trying to shake off the court print you have on your backside. <laughs> you have that's to calmly go up there, and you got people screaming at you, and cheerleaders heckling you, and. Look at that. Yeah, unfazed. That's just the first free throw trip to the line tonight for ULM. So a team that shoots it well hasn't gotten to there much, though. Tough now, to do on the road sometimes. Absolutely that, and the fact that, you know, Texas State's one of those teams, they play defense with their feet. They don't, they're not a handsy team. They're just very aggressive. They swarm to the ball, and they make it very hard on you. They're just a team that doesn't foul a lot either. Not many free throws for the Bobcats either. It's not just three for four. This game's been played from the perimeter for Texas State. Harris wanted it again, but backs it out. So if Texas State holds on, that's four in a row now over ULM. And it would be eight straight Sun Belt home wins for this Bobcats team. McDaniel stepped out of bounds. Well, also, you got to credit Texas State. They have bottled him up since that opening spurt where he hit two threes. Absolutely. I mean, you could see he's frustrated. He's trying to make something happen for his team. Buckets have been hard to come by, but Bobcats is doing an outstanding job of cutting him off at the pass. There was really nowhere to go but out of bounds. Pearson and Nottingham, not really in much of a hurry. 11 point lead, almost eight minutes gone by here in the second half. Long skip pass around the zone. Oh, good ball movement. To the corner, Newman! And that's textbook, you just can't defend that. The ball moves faster than humans do, and guys were moving, pinpoint passes, and then even better, they finish it off with a triple. Isaiah Gurley, rather, had just checked in for Texas State. It's his first points of the night. And a big stuff by Eric Terry. Nottingham probing to the corner. Gurley got excited and walked too early. Now Texas State keeps pouring it on from distance. The Bobcats on fire. They lead by 14 here in the second. <laughs> Down to ULM, 1997 Southland Conference Championship for the Bobcats, one of two conference titles for Texas State. Well, there's a championship performance. Right now, let's take a look at some of the top teams in the NCAA and the NCAA scoreboard sponsored by HEB. No score does more than my HEB. Suffocating defense from Virginia. You want to talk about good defense that Texas State plays. How about the best defensive team in the country holding Georgia Tech just 48 points. And then that epic West Coast Conference rivalry, St. Mary's and Gonzaga close in the second. 
Love me some St. Mary's. You just can't be like the WCC. I was thinking about the one in San Antonio. Right? Okay, gotcha. <laughs> oh! Hey, we'll be back there Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday night, telecast for St. Mary's. How about that shot right there? He hit every corner of the rim conceivable. I wonder if we're going to see Isaiah Gurley again. He came in, only played a couple of minutes in the first half, but nailed a three. That's Michael Ertl, the freshman who's worked his way into the starting lineup. This is the free throw, though. Pretty unique roster for ULM. You have three guys from Australia, a guy from Freeport, and then Michael Ertl from Indianapolis. Kind of out of the ordinary to come down to Monroe, Louisiana. And there's a foul down low on Travis Bunning. That's his third. Yeah, I thought that was a really good job. The officials getting together there because I thought, what are they going to call there? I'll tell you what, man, 45 has had himself a ball game. We talk about Eric Terry and the minutes that he's played tonight, 14, picking up five rebounds and really making his presence felt inside. Collins here comes in here and, and rips the touch a free right there. That's right. Two assists as well. Just things that don't pop out of the stat sheet, right, but they fill it, and all of a sudden you realize he had a pretty impressive performance. Absolutely, and especially when... You know, the Bobcats early on in this game were having a hard time finding anything on the positive side in terms of scoring the basketball. You know, I really felt like he came in and provided nice little energy. And again, you know, there's so much of what he's been doing, he does away from the ball and he does it very well. Earl trying to force his way in again. Nice finish by the freshman. And he's over there cursing himself. He was a smidge late going over there to help out, but. I have a feeling that'll be the last time that happens. Pass intercepted. They were looking for Terry. Here comes ULM. High leaping ability by Jean Pierre. And Marvin Jean Pierre has seven points. They've got to be really careful with the basketball. You know, it looked like Texas State had finally got their hands on all these turnovers, but you turn the ball over just inside a half court, and almost always it's going to result in a bunny at the other end. Well, this zone has certainly slowed down a little bit of what Texas State wants to do. They're still shooting very well behind the three-point line. But it yields another turnover. Well, moving screen. And all of a sudden, Texas State's kind of hit a little bit of a lull. But there you go, Aaron Pass. And he's doing a very good job filling the lane and then dishing it off to his buddy there last second, Gene Pierre. Marvin having a really nice night, too, quietly for ULM. Some mass subs in here for Texas State. You know, Emmanuel King is now back in. Got the gauze on the right elbow. Darius Duncan is checked in for the Bobcats as well. Ertl still firing. Good fundamentals. A nice angle off the square. I don't see that very often, little Tim Duncan. A little mid-range off the square. That's a tough shot. Yeah, a little lefty, a little Manu Ginobili in him. Yo, this is crazy. Peacock got pushed out of the play now, finds himself back in. And three second call on Emmanuel King. A few empty trips now for Texas State. And Louisiana Monroe, the other still down by 12. But they have the ball and perhaps an opportunity to cut it to single digits. Yeah, not only that, make it a two-possession game. I mean, you've got to be really careful. I know, you know, when you come out and you start knocking down all these threes, you want to live out there, and then how about that? You got Michael Ertl all of a sudden in fuego. Ertl has taken over down the stretch. These last few possessions gets the ball and fires for the Warhawks. But again, you know, you come down, you get a little too confident behind that three. And then you miss a couple, and then all of a sudden you get out of whack. Texas State's got to find itself again. Move the basketball, find the open guy. Right there. Is the 9-0 run. And it continues, but an offensive rebound for 
the Bobcats. What did he tell you to do? Follow your shot, and Duncan did just that. That was something they worked on in shoot around as well. Danny Casper wanted them to jump into the shot, not float away. As some guys have the tendency to do, kind of go up and then float back down the court. Really stressed that, stepping into the shot. Smack back out again. Pearson funnels his way to the basket. In for two. I'll tell you, Mike, when these guys figured out that they were getting smashed on the boards, they turned this game around. I mean, you know, right there, they get into a little scoring wall, but, you know, again, you get three cracks at the basket, eventually the other team gets tired of playing deep. A run by ULM, countered by the Bobcats. Texas State leads by seven. Texas State led by as many as 14. That's been chopped in half, in a large part thanks to the freshman, Michael Ertle. Yeah, I guess you could say he's been really fertile scoring the ball that Myrtle in the second half. I mean, comes out and only has two points in the first half, but they've had a hard time finding anybody that can score tonight. They've got three guys, as we talked about, Mike, that are amongst the league leaders in scores in the top 30 in this league. And Texas State's done a really good job of holding down Munnings, McDaniel, and Gene Pierre tonight, but Mr. Ertle with 11 quick ones here in the last few minutes. And Keith Rashard did say they don't have a set go-to player. He's looking for a guy to assert himself, and there is the fertile scoring touch from Ertle. I'll tell you what, we're going to have to roll somebody else over to that guy and get the ball out of his hands because, I'll tell you what, he hasn't missed. It was Trey Lorenz Nottingham early for Texas State who couldn't miss. Now Michael Ertle has picked it up for the Warhawks. He almost got a steal. Drive to the basket results in a foul on Kier Dang. And will put the Bobcats at the free throw line. So Darius Duncan, one for two from the floor so far in this game. He works on his 10th minute in the ball game, but again, Mr. Ertle, have yourself a ball game, young man. Duncan flips it in. I'm trying to think of another kind of witty pun to talk about how well he's scoring right now. We probably ought to just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> the moment's passed. <laughs> Productive trip for Darius Duncan, the senior from Fishers, Indiana. And Ertl has kind of taken over point guard duties as well. In place of Jordan Harris, who's on the bench. Heat check, why not? And it goes back down to his offense. And Ertl quickly goes to get that one. Yeah, he acted, had the little drop step like he was going to take it to the hoop, but stepped it back and created some space for himself. I was shocked he's missed the way he's gone. Munning sent it up, no good, down to the Bobcats. Interesting, we were at shoot around this morning. Coach was going over all that stuff, and he was talking about their starters and what they like to do. And again, Texas State's done a really good job holding their fab three in check pretty much tonight. Zone shifting for ULM, shot clock under five. Blunt fadeaway three off the side of the rim. And now to ULM. Danny Casper did not like that. Just what she said, you know, you want guys stepping into shots, not fading away, especially when nobody's on you. Jean Pierre rises, flips it up, got his own miss. And a strong effort doesn't result, but how about the hustle and leaping ability by Marvin Jean Pierre? He's showing a little frustration here, too. But he's been hustling, he just can't get anything to go. How about that? Pearson with the left and then going to change hands in midair. Yeah, it was something nice just getting it off. Munnings again for three over the top. And slapped down to Texas State. Uh, I'll tell you what, shooters got to shoot, but man, I'll tell you, he has been off tonight. I and mean, some of these haven't been close. This is the guy who had 17 points last year against Texas State. Stuck on four right now. You don't have to hurry. I mean, there's plenty of time left. 
That was a hair trigger quick release, and I get it. You know, sometimes you want guys to take shots if it's first available, but you haven't had it going all night, and you're still in this ball game. You got to be smart with these possessions down the stretch. Well, coming up next on our Citywide Sports Network telecast calendar, which is brought to you by IHOP, you can join us again Saturday night. You can watch live the UTEP Miners on the road against UTSA at 7.30 on CW35. Chuck and I will be there again. Visit citywidesportsnetwork.com for our complete schedule of exciting college basketball and football games. CSN, where it all begins. Now, UTSA has been in a bunch of close games all year long. Some they've won and in a little bit of a tough stretch right now. We're going to have to have that game against UTEP on Saturday. Both of these teams, ULM, Texas State, and then, as you mentioned, UTSA, young teams, and they have been hit or miss sometimes at finishing out close games. This will be interesting, like we talked about with Texas State. Have they approved? at closing out these games, protecting the leads. Danny Casper thinks they have during this five-game win streak. But ULM is not going down without a fight. No, absolutely not. You know, there were some other things he really thinks that they've improved on during the course of the year, the, you know, the, the assist to turnover ratio. Turnovers have been a little bit of a problem tonight, but he has definitely seen some growth, and I think he really likes these guys as men, not just players, so, uh, you know, there's still some development to go for sure as players and as men, but I think he really likes the makeup of these guys as a whole. Especially, you know, we talked about all the setbacks that they've had to overcome already this year and, and have found a way to win these close Sun Belt games all year long. Peacock sends it up, short off the front. Here comes Ertl. Right to the basket, and he gets fouled. Well, I thought that was pretty good defense. Texas State doing a marvelous job racing down the court. They had two guys on what looked like it was going to be a run out, but Urkel forcing the issue. But you see, long rebound, Urkel cutting across. There wasn't a whole lot there, but I guess enough. And the ball don't lie, so I guess it was true. <laughs> Nigel Pearson back in, though. This is the heart and soul of Texas State's offense, the sophomore from Beaumont, Texas, as Darius Duncan heads to the bench. Ertl's free throw gives him 17, one shy of his career high. He's scored in double figures six times this year. You now, he single-handedly brought them back in this ballgame. Just a five-point deficit for the Warhawks. Nottingham gets the bump and gets the foul on Brandon Newman. And now we're looking at potentially free throws. If they continue to get fouls like this, five fouls for ULM, five minutes left. Two more puts Texas State in the bonus. Curling around on a corner shot, blunt, no good, strong rebound. How about the dribble kept by Jean Pierre? was outstanding. I mean, first of all, I thought he was going to end up on his backside and like a cat. Somebody dropped off a roof with his feet up in the air. I mean, he knew exactly where he was in relation to the floor. And then I don't know how he ended up getting a dribble, too. That was pretty darn athletic. Ertl no go on the three, but wants to keep shooting. Keith Richard might have find him, found himself that go-to score that he's been looking for. If Michael Erdl keeps this pace up. There's Jean Pierre, three rims in, and it's down to a two-point ball game. Hustle by Newman, creating the turnover, and now ULM's got the offense working. The Bobcats haven't scored in nearly four minutes. They've seen a 14-point lead trimmed to two. You see how active Ron Monroe is on that defensive end. This is a winless Warhawks team on the road. 0-7 this year. Nottingham pushes off and an offensive foul. That's his third. 
So we head to a timeout with ULM on a tear. The Warhawks have surged back into it. They trail by two, late second. The scoring drought for Texas State that's hit three minutes and 52 seconds. And the Bobcats led by as many as 14 points. But now ULM basketball after that foul before we went into the break. What do you think about the acting display here by Brandon Newman? Well, first of all, we'll start with the fact that the refs got the call right. There was no doubt that Trey Nottingham pushed off. But it was pretty funny at the end of that that Brandon Newman really sold it on the back end. I'm going to nominate him for the Academy Award. That was perfect. He is from California. We grew up with okay. Hollywood in his sights. Michael Ertl probing has carried them back within a basket. Step back jumper too strong. Down to Texas State. That was a nice play design out of the timeout. Got it to their hoss. Just had a rough night shooting. And Sam McDaniel, who missed that, came in as their leading scorer, nearly 16 points a game. He's been stuck at eight. Yeah, and he's three of 12 from the floor. Nottingham started five for five from three. Trying to do work on top of that zone. Entry pass to King, spins in for two. It's a quiet shooting the ball tonight, but boy, you gotta like that from the big fella. They got him down there and he put his defender in the blender, and banked it in. Bobcats needed that one to stop the drought. First two points for Emmanuel King. Yeah, they couldn't have come in a bigger time for Texas State. Just 2.30 left in this one. Gene Pierre, strong drive, doesn't get it to go. I'll tell you what, he, he did everything but make that basket. I mean, he is so quick with his movements. You know, just shocking. Oh, look at this. He got fouled, too. Fouled. King had good space. Yeah, that came up looking for some kind of call. With the functional speed by Pierre is just off the charts. He's got to watch, though, when he gets frustrated, he starts throwing little chicken wings. Keith Richard didn't like the way the offense was flowing. He calls the timeout. Under two minutes left. Shot clock at 15. It is ULM basketball, but they trail by four. Well, this is where the coach and Richard saying they haven't found their identity yet. They're still looking for that set go-to player. These are the moments where you can maybe start to find an identity and forge that path towards the end of the season. Now, he told us they had a mediocre team one year that when he was a coach. They finished 8 and 2 in the last 10 games. So it just took that long to find your stride. And you never know, he said, as a coach, you never know when that team will finally get it and something clicks. You know, he had those two really good teams back to back years a couple of years ago. And he said, you know, those guys are all gone. We have a whole new group. And it has been a struggle trying to figure out exactly what we are. And he feels like, you know, he hates the fact that their record is what it is because he doesn't know if he's ever going to have a good shooting team as he's gotten this year. But he goes, it's just, it's just been really weird waiting for somebody to step up and try to lead these guys, you know. And, and it is, you know, sometimes you don't have – those kinds of personalities, and sometimes those personalities develop over time. You know, we're still talking about a core group of young guys on the floor. I mean, we talked about the magnificent minutes that they've gotten from that young man tonight. So, you know, it's all part of the growing process, and, you know, maybe they'll be one of those teams that turns it on late. I mean, they sure look pretty darn good in terms of the effort and what they're getting tonight. Shots haven't been falling for the most part, but playing hard and they're giving Texas State all can handle right now. Coming up shortly the John Wayne Service Company post game show but first a lot of game action left and that frenetic pressure by Texas State forced the shot clock violation. How about that adjustment by Danny Casper yeah, out of the timeout? And that's one of those things you know if you're Texas State I mean you're going to bank everything on your defense you're going to start with that that's how you're going to build your house with that brick but that was nice because you're right they did ratchet it up and they went next level and yeah you force their team to take that kind of a shot to end a possession, and that's how you win close ball games. Under 90 seconds left, Bobcats holding on to a four-point lead. They have fed King 
consistently on these last three, three possessions. Peacock surges to the basket, gets it, and the foul. How about that? A nice, aggressive move after the ball was kicked inside. And the thing I liked about Pearson was he went up and acted like he was going to dunk that ball and then force the contact. But look, because of that, he was able to create some space there with his strong hand. Stayed with it. Got it to go. Peacock has been Mr. Clutch for Texas State. Had the buzzer beater on Saturday to beat UALR. Just a step inside the three-point line, knocked it down, very tough shot. And then last week here against Troy, he had the game-winning putback to help the Bobcats beat the Trojans. That might have helped seal this one as well. Not so fast, says Sam McDaniel. First three since the first minute of this game. I'll tell you what, he's been throwing up icicles all game, but get the guy in crunch time, he might be the guy that ultimately they're going to have to lean on down the stretch. He's their leading scorer, and boy, Big shot there, couldn't have come at a better time for ULM. Back to a one possession ball game. As this zone settles in. Got to get a rock up. Nottingham steps through, puts it up off the side, no good. Shot clock off. Ertl probing in traffic. McDaniel pump fakes, travels, and another turnover by ULM, their 11th of the game. How about Pearson? Makes the big shot at the other end on the offensive side. Forces the turnover right here. There's a lot of human error on that as well, but Pearson doing a really nice job forcing the issue and making ULM rush that possession. They look really discombobulated to start it. And then they rushed and turned it over. Can't do that in a one possession game. The defense settled in on Ertl, and then after the initial push, you're right, it looked like the Warhawks didn't really know what they wanted to do with that basketball. Tough, too, because there's not enough time where you don't know, hey, do I settle in and take the three to try to go for the tie, or do you go to the basket and play the time game? And it, they just got caught in the indecision. It, it's very interesting, isn't it? And, you know, and you're talking to their head coach this morning and talking about guys stepping up and you know you saw some youth there you're in a one possession game and that's that's your best possession that you can put forward i mean you know they've been coached better than that and it just you, you can't panic and there was panic there and again you talk about you know texas state's ability to win these close games once conference has started i mean it certainly helps when you can force the opposition into that Tight pressure by the Warhawks, and then they foul. And the refs just getting in to make sure no extracurricular skirmishes happen. Nope, got to be careful there. I mean, I know that Nottingham took a little bit of a shot after that foul, but you can't give it back because sometimes that's all the ref sees, and the refs decided to swallow their whistle right there because it might have been a tit for tat. But again, you cannot do little things like that when you were looking at a three-point lead and you're about to go to the line. Well, actually, they are going to come take a look or go take a look at the monitor to see if an elbow was thrown. So potentially costly if Nottingham in his frustration then turned and fired an elbow back because you can review this, and that's what they're doing here into the final minute. Now, it was hard from our angle to see exactly what happened. It looked like he was just trying to, you know, one of those, hey, get off me moves. But... Again, anytime you raise your arm, your elbow, anything else, you could potentially draw the ire of those guys. Let's take a look. He's getting doubled. He's caught in the corner. He spins out of it. Dang's just trying to foul. And, oh, yeah, you can't go up high like that. So they're discussing it. Well, Nottingham definitely hit him. Now it's up to the referees what they want to implement there. It's, it was not an elbow. It's more of the hand. But it's at the discretion of the officials if they want to call something after the fact on Nottingham. Now, there was still, keep in mind, there was still a foul called on ULM. So free throws don't just get erased. Right. right. Deng was trying to foul. He's trying to foul, stop the clock, and send Texas State to the line. So 
you know, part of that, if you're Texas State and you're possessing the ball, you got to know they're trying to foul you. So you can't get too too aggravated by that. I mean, th we've seen worse when a guy's trying to intentional foul there. Three-point ball game. ULM is in this situation after traveling with a chance to potentially tie the game. So playing the foul game, trying to put Texas State at the line. And the Bobcats this year are just a 65% free throw shooting team. But tonight, they're seven for nine. Well, again, end of game scenarios, you could do yourself a lot of good by knocking down the free, free ones at the end of the game. And I'm curious to see how the referees sort this out. Well, everything seems kind of amicable. The players are talking to each other as the coaches get the explanation. Richard is getting the explanation right now. After the view, the original foul, number zero, Brandon Newman. After the play, contact technical foul on Texas State, number two, Trey Nottingham. So Nottingham will shoot the free throw. Which well, actually it should be one and one, but no one's at the free throw line right now. This is a one and one. But it seems like because of the then foul afterwards, Texas or ULM will get free throws as the dead ball and a technical. So you what? You know, you, you have to move on. You gotta go to the next play. And you know, for this place to be as silent as it was, you've got time left on the clock yet. Nobody lined up. I mean, it does mess with your line of sight. That was a pretty big free throw he just hit for a lot of reasons. And then I jinxed him. So one for two, and now ULM will get the basketball, and they will shoot free throws. A technical free throw. And who else, of course? This star tonight for the Warhawks, the freshman Michael Ertl. One of these can tie his career high. Well, I think by the letter of the law, the refs got it right. And we talked about this being the best free throw shooting team in the conference, and that one leaves a mark. Chaos for a freshman to deal with right now. Does hit one of two. So a career high tying 18 points for Michael Ertl. But now it will be Warhawk basketball. So look at this, three point ball game, 12 seconds left, and Warhawks basketball because of that technical foul. So not to say that Nottingham, you know, caught up in the moment, yeah, it's a frustration thing, but Danny Casper was pointing to his head after that was all settled out, and talking to Nottingham saying, hey, just think, use your head there. Because now you're in a situation where, because of that free throw, it's a one possession ball game. If it just would have been the foul on Nottingham, and he hits one of two, you're looking at a four-point game. Right now, three points and the ball for the Warhawks. Well, we've seen just about everything this year, partner, calling games on a citywide sports network. We've seen game enders. We've seen crazy endings. Why not another one tonight? You know, this be our slogan. We do drama. I'm telling you, we got the tape to back it up. But again, now Texas State, for everything that just happened, you got to play defense. You got to get a stop, and you got to guard, and you got to get the rebound. Do not give ULM a second shot at this. Michael Ertl is in the far corner. Marvin Jean Pierre will inbound. Jordan Harris races to get the basketball. Now under 10 seconds left, trailing by three. Tight pressure and a foul. Texas State wants to put them at the line and then make them have to foul again. So now ULM will have to shoot free throws and then have to foul again, trailing by three. Texas State's bringing some muscle in off the bench to try to help if there's a rebounding situation. 
Danny Casper choosing to tell his guys to foul, send them to the line, and not allow them to at least jack up a three and maybe potentially tie this game. Harris is an 83% free throw shooter. Shooting one and one. Short off what. the front, down to Texas State. Uh, go figure, right? You got the leading free throw shooting team in the conference coming in here. Got some guys pushing 90% on this team, and they blow two of them in the closing seconds. And maybe this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with Coach about sometimes you just got to get some breaks. And Texas State certainly has gotten some breaks courtesy of ULM at the free throw line here in the closing seconds. He talked about the break they got last time against Troy, a missed layup to give Texas State the win. And now Nigel Pearson at the line to try to salt this one away. Rims out, ball down to Ertl. Four seconds left, Michael Ertl gets fouled. Foul and a four. smart play, very smart play by Nigel Pearson with Texas State still up three. That all but assures that you're gonna have to make and then miss one if you're ULM. I'm not even sure if he did that intentionally, but a smart play by Nigel Pearson right there. Well, it's tricky. I mean, you're rolling the dice when you do no, stuff did. like this Definitely because did, if, yeah. yeah, you foul him and he jumps up and tries to make a shot, you might send the guy to the line with three shots. So you gotta do it. You gotta do it early like he did. Well, okay, so bear with me here. They're back in the monitor looking to see if timeout was called by ULM or if someone called timeout before the foul. Do they have any timeouts? They do not. I'll tell you what, How about just this when you think you've seen end. it all, right? Yeah, I mean, these end game scenarios, every time you think you've seen it all, you get something else. I'll tell you what, I will never go into a game now with you knowing what to expect. <laughs> we'll just plan for every scenario. We'll have a scenario sheet written out. Oh, mercy. I'll tell you, nothing comes easy in this conference either. All right, use your eyes here. Can you see anyone calling timeout? Are they trying to see if they have the right amount of time on the clock? Could be anything. I think big situation here to remember the missed free throw on the front end of the one and one by Jordan Harris to make it still a three point deficit. So that way that Ertl rebound and then the foul, they were able to do that. If Jordan Harris makes that first free throw, then you're shooting another one. You're down two, maybe you make it. All these end game what if scenarios right. can change drastically. But as it stands, the door is ajar. You're going to have time to potentially make something happen here. All right, they were just checking the clock. 2.6 seconds left on the clock now. Really not enough time. That's, that's going to be risky if you try to make both free throws, then foul, and then come down to the other end. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. But it's up to Michael Little. you got to make the first one first and allow yourself the opportunity at a putback. And remember, when you do that, if you try to collect the second one, you've got to hit the rim. Earl's first, no good. Tip back around, out into space, and Texas State is going to come away with the win. Six straight wins for Texas State for the first time since 2003-2004. The Bobcats improved a 6-1 in conference. We'll come back here from head coach Danny Casper after the Bobcats win over ULM. To the John Wayne Service Company post game show. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all. 210 293 6700. Let's go to Chuck standing by with head coach Danny Casper. Yeah, Mike, thank you very much, coach. Congratulations. Sixth win in the conference. Tell me what you liked about this ball game tonight. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're ahead at the end. That's what I like. No, but we did come out of the second half playing harder. I don't understand our, uh, it seemed like we were just a little bit more reserved to come out the first half. Second half, it came out a little bit of fire. Uh, number two, Ertl on their team really put a 
light under them, scored 10 straight points and kind of got them going and we hit a low at the same time. So whereas I thought we might pull away and win this game by 15 or so, here we are with a three point victory. All right, well tell us about your cardiac cats. You got six wins now in conference, only one loss. And those six wins, 20 points is the margin of difference in those six games. Tell me how you're able to do this night in and night out. Uh, just, I mean, you know, we've been a little lucky in cases, in, in a couple of cases, but really they just play their hearts out. They're great kids. I enjoy being with them. They work hard, and our practices have been pretty good. Uh, but we've, we've got a, you know, we made some turnovers today. Nigel Pearson, who's a great player for us, you know, made some careless turnovers. And we can't let people keep coming back in the games. If we would stop that, and that's what we did early when we were had a 7-5 and five record before Christmas. Uh, we were turning it over, so we got to get away from that, especially, you know, if we, we face a, a good Louisiana Lafayette team coming in here Saturday. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you. Much obliged, and congratulations on the win. Michael, back to you. All right, thanks, Chuck. Well, let's talk about now our CSN player of the game, who's rolling, presented by Rolling Rentals and More, and our player of the game is Trey Nottingham. Rolling Rentals and More, wheels, tires, appliances, electronics, no credit check, easy payment plans, low cash prices. Call 210-521 Brent Nottingham started and just did not miss. Five for five from the three-point line. Now his arm did get tired. He missed his final two attempts. But 16 points, one shy of his career high for the junior. But Trey Nottingham is our who's rolling player of the game in this one. He certainly was impressive to help out on Nigel Pearson. And now here are CSN final stats. They're brought to you by San Marcos Convention and Visitors Bureau. San Marcos like a local. Hey, got a lot of B-bounds in this game, huh? <laughs> hey, I, I tell you, Mike, to me, I thought that was the difference in the game. When Texas State was getting punched in the mouth early in this ball game and having things really not go their way, you know, the fact that they were able to get a grapple on what was going on on the boards on both ends, and once they seized control there and then they got some, you know, they got some shots to fall early in that second half, you know, they were on their way. But, boy, tell you what, they did catch a few breaks, man. When you talk about a team like this missing free throws at the end and you walk away and get this one, tip your cap to the other team too. Finding ways to win. Texas State now 13 and seven, six and one in conference. The Bobcats roll into a big matchup and we'll preview it coming up next. Welcome back to the John Wayne Service Company post game show. We have plenty to get to. It's time now to take a look at our play of the game presented by Thomas J. Henry. If you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24 7 nights and weekends, 210 656 1000. It was down the stretch. How about Alex Peacock again, maybe helping them win one? Yeah, it was Alex Peacock, but really it was a lot of guys. I mean, you talk about Peacock and Trey Nottingham really doing a good job. Picking up the scoring load tonight, but obviously Peacock's been huge for them all, years and all year and picks up our play of the game. Well, let's take a look now at the updated Sunbelt standings presented by the San Marcos Convention and Tourist Bureau. San Marcos, like a local, huge win for Texas State, 6-1 and one in conference, and they take on Louisiana on Saturday. Well, coming up next on our CSN Telecast calendar, UTSA and UTEP on Saturday night. We'll get going with that at 7.30 on CW35. That will be on the Citywide Sports Network, CSN, where it all begins. Chuck, one maybe quick final thought here on this win for Texas State. Well, you know, it's a long year, Mike, obviously, and some nights you got it and some nights you don't. But this was a night tonight where, you know, the Bobcats weren't real sharp with the basketball. Turned it over 15 times. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but they found a way to win, which is what they've done since they've gotten into the Sun Belt Conference. So, you know, you can talk about this, and you don't have to apologize for anything. You win in this league with as much parity as there is, you've earned it. Well, that'll do it for our CSN telecast of Texas State basketball. It's a Learfield presentation with Quarter Moon Productions and the Texas State Sports Network. Good night from Strahan Coliseum on the campus of Texas State University in San Marcos with a final score, Texas State 55, ULM 52 for Chuck, myself. Thanks for watching. Have a nice evening.